Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Welcome to our, the third part of our six-part Dominaria first look. And real quick, you may have heard this in the other two videos, but if you're wondering why we're seeing so many Dominaria cards so quickly, Wizards accidentally posted 142 cards on their Chinese language website yesterday, so we got a big chunk of the set to look at. Wizards did come out later and just say, hey, our bad, and they did give us all the information in all languages, and I uh, said, yeah, you got a early look at the set. So we're trying to just dig through all of this. There's a lot to dig through. We're going quickly here. A few things you need to know about this video. If you don't want spoilers for Dominaria, whether it be cards or storyline spoilers, then obviously you probably don't want to watch this video. And secondly, we don't have full cards here. We don't have art. We don't have flavor text. We have card names. We have the rules text. We have power toughness and the types. But we are missing some important information, especially when it comes to rarities, of course. So this isn't a full-on like review like we would normally do when a card's previewed or during our set review. This is more kind of first impressions, and we're kind of speed rounding these cards. We have so many to go through. So that's what you can expect here. We did talk about the new mechanics in the previous video, so I would refer you to those if this is the first video that you're watching. Now, just really fast before we get into it, I don't want to spend any more time. So hey, if you're looking for a way to support the channel, just check out the description below. There's a few Let's get into it, and like the other videos, we're going to be looking at mock-ups of cards from Scryfall, so that's where these come from. They're not the actual cards. The rarities you see on these are just guesses by them, so I wouldn't put too much into that. So here we go. Chainer's Torment. This is a black and three. It's a saga. Number one and number two. Chainer's Torment deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. Three, create an XX Black Nightmare Horror Creature Token, where X is half your life total round it up. It deals X damage to you. Okay. So I don't know. It's a little risky. Maybe it could be a big payoff, but this nightmare creature doesn't have flying or evasion. That makes me a little bit nervous. And if I'm pouring life into the thing, I feel like I could get blown out here pretty easily. I don't know if I like this one that much. I mean, those first two abilities are interesting. Being able to do basically an eight point life swing over the next couple turns. That's cool. But I don't know. That last one scares me a little bit. I might avoid this even in Draft and Seal. Dark Bargain. Speaking of risky cards in black, here's another one that's going to damage you. But this one's a good one. This costs a black and three. It's an instant. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them in your hand and the other one into your graveyard. And then you deal two damage to yourself. So you are going three deep. And then one of those cards you get to put in your graveyard. And there are definitely graveyard shenanigans that we've been seeing so far here. So we don't know the extent of those yet, but there are definitely some in the set. So who knows? You could be able to find value there too. Fantastic card. I think this could be good enough to see standard play. Definitely great for you in sealed and draft. Demonic Vigor. This is a black enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to its owner's hand. I do like that this is kind of like an insurance policy to keep the creature alive. That's a pretty good deal considering you might have a creature that's really important and you're using it as a win condition. And this only costs one and that's really what this is for. The plus one plus one's nice, but I don't think that's why you play this card. I don't really see this happening in standard or anything like that. It's just a little too conditional, but I could see myself trying to protect my win condition and maybe sealed especially with something like this. Demon Lord, Bells and Lock. I guess this is Liliana's next demon. Two black and four legendary creature, Elder Demon 6-6, six, six, Flying Trample. When this enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Then put that card into your hand. If the card's converted mana cost is four or greater, repeat the process. Demon Lord, Bells and Lock deals one damage to you for each card put into your hand this way. I'm not too worried about the damage I'm taking from the cards. It actually feels pretty fair. I would be a little worried about decking myself a little too much if I'm not careful or don't have a good deck to kind of work with this. This is an expensive card, and it's a little high variance. I don't really see it making it into standard, especially considering it's legendary, but a 6-6 six, six for 6. Yeah, higher end of the curve, maybe for sealed or draft. I'd probably want to try it out. I do think you could find some value there. You know what? Even if you're not doing this more than once, just getting one card, just having this replace itself, is actually pretty good in those formats, I think. So, yeah, it could be kind of interesting to try out there, if nothing else. Dredge Sentinel. Black and two. Creature Skeleton. Warrior two. One. Pay three. Tap this. It gains indestructible till end of turn. So, if you weren't convinced that this isn't the new Regenerate, 
I think this is the new regenerate. And we've seen that in recent sets. They haven't really used regeneration. They've been using mechanics like this one. And, you know, whatever. Some people will probably like it. Some people won't. But either way, is this a good card? 2-1 for 3? And that ability costs 3? I don't know. It doesn't feel great to me. Now, if there's a persistent threat in Limited that's coming at me on the ground that I need to hold at bay, yeah, it's probably great in a situation like that. But... I don't know if I main deck this. We haven't seen the whole set yet, so it's probably not fair for me to say that. But I don't know. It just feels a little underwhelming. Fungal Infection. Black instant target creature gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. Create a one, one green sapperling creature token. So sapperling and funguses, or fungi, I should say, I believe. Is that fungi? Is plural? <laughs> They're back. And if you like them in Fallen Empires, you're going to be liking them here. Um, it seems like it could be kind of fun, and we'll have to kind of see where it goes. Definitely... I'm sure it will have a Golgari theme behind it, but uh, this is a card that's also just a decent combat trick, even if you're not all in on that type of thing. But it does feel like Black has a strong aristocrat strategy. You're going to see that as we go through. Ways to create tokens, things to sacrifice them to, that type of thing, which I always like when Black does that. So this could be a fun color for limited play for sure. So, But like I said, regardless, still a good limited combat trick. Kezero of Sanger Pureblood. A little expensive, but this actually kind of seems sweet. Two black and five legendary creature vampire, four, four flying. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on this. Pay a red and three and it will deal two damage to target creature. Very red feeling effect there. Makes sense. Again, I think it's too expensive, unfortunately, for standard, but I would love to play with this casually. Maybe commander. I think this is good and limited and sealed or draft, even though, again, it's a little higher casting cost, but you can swing it there. It does feel like a very powerful card, and I love the Sengir reference here. Knight of Malice. Okay, we saw the alternate white knight a little bit ago. Here's the newer version of Black Knight. Black and one, human knight, two, two, first strike, hexproof from white. So this creature can't be the target of white spells or abilities your opponents control. Knight of Malice gets plus one, plus zero, as long as any player controls a white permanent. So yeah, it's a new Black Knight, and I mean, I liked Protection from Colors. I thought that was a cool mechanic from back in the day, but I realize they're getting away from that. This does open up some more avenues as well, because I can actually put a white aura or something like that on my own creature. I do like that. Also, by definition, Hexproof doesn't affect combat in any way, so it doesn't impact blocking or anything of that nature. And of course, Knights do feel like they have some synergy between Black and White. Lich's Mastery. Three black and three, legendary enchantment, hexproof, you can't lose the game. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life, for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. When Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. <laughs> Alright, so a call back to Lich, old school card there. And it's fun for that reason. Do I actually play this? I don't know. I mean, it's a big risk. Three black and three is expensive. I mean, three of it on color is kind of hard to swing in itself. And then you have to be in a situation where it makes sense for you to want to kind of stall and take damage, I guess. I don't know. I think it's a fun casual card. I'd want to mess around with it, no doubt. But do I see this crossing over into like standard or anything like that? No, not really. Even in limited, I think I would be hard pressed to find a way to exploit this. Now, granted, I understand black does have some token creation going on and such, which could buy you more and more time. But is that good enough for this? I don't know. I, I want to see the rest of the set. Phyrexian Scriptures. Two black and two. This is one of the sagas. And if you missed the other videos, check those out where we talk more about sagas. But number one, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Two, destroy all non-artifact creatures. Three, exile all creatures from all opponents' graveyards. I mean, that number three is a little conditional. Maybe it's important, maybe it's not. It takes a while to get there. You might have already lost the game if you're really concerned about getting rid of a graveyard between that point and the point it resolves. But the one and two are interesting. I mean, giving a plus one, plus one counter to your creature, making an artifact so that next time around, next turn, that you can blow everything up if you have other artifact creatures to play with. Wonderful. So that feels kind of good and maybe not super fast, but fast enough that your opponent has to find an answer relatively quickly. So, I don't know. I think that's actually sort of sweet. And could this see standard play? I don't know if there will be a deck that's that focused on artifacts, but maybe if there's enough tools in this set, you never know. But at least for right now, I definitely want to try this in limited. There are some strong artifacts out there. And there is some artifact interactions definitely between black and blue that we've seen so far, it looks like. Rat Colony. Black and one. Rat. Two, one. 
Rat Colony gets plus one, plus zero oh for each other rat you control. The deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. So this is actually a pretty sweet inclusion. I don't know if there's any other rat cards in the set, honestly, but I feel like this is a throwback to Plague Rats. Back in the old days, people used to make decks of just Plague Rats before they had the four card limit. So this is a nice little callback to that and actually could be a powerful deck. I would love to try it out. Do you think this could hold its own in standard? <laughs> Maybe with some card draw behind it? I don't know. That might be reaching a little bit, but it would be fun to try it. And again, in draft, this will be great. Maybe not as awesome in sealed, but in draft, this could be a lot of fun. Settle the score. Two black and two exile target creature. Put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. It's a sorcery. I don't see this crossing into standard because there's just better instant removal spells right now. But sorcery speed ones are still good in draft and sealed. So you'll be happy to get it there. Maybe even first pickable in some packs, I would say. Salad Soothsayer, black and three, two, three, fungus, pay two, sack a creature, draw a card. This card actually feels very, very strong. Like I mentioned, there's definitely a lot of sacrifice themes going on here in black. And this is a fantastic payout maybe for some token creation or something like that. So could this see standard play? I don't know, maybe. Like if it's not this meta coming up, if there is a deck at some point that can exploit some more token generation in the future. Yeah, this will definitely be a part of it. And in limited, this feels like a fun build around card or just a card for basic like value, right? Even if you're just sacrificing a few of your early plays that don't matter as much anymore, this could be good for you. The Eldest Reborn. Black and four. This is a saga. One, each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Two, each opponent discards a card. Three, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Again, it's a ways to get there. I mean, can you get value from the Edict and then from making an opponent discard? Yeah, sure, but at five, it feels a little slow. The three's awesome, but it's got to stay alive and get there, right? It's going to take a couple turns for that to happen. If your opponent doesn't have an answer, wonderful. But this card feels a little risky to me. I'd still play it in draft or sealed, maybe even more so sealed, but I don't really see this one crossing over in the standard. Torgar, Famine Incarnate, two black and six. Legendary creature avatar, seven, six. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way, and when this enters battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total rounded down. Interesting. So target player, if you're low on life, it can bring you up. If you're higher on life, you can bring your opponent down. Potentially, it's still a 7-6. It doesn't have evasion, though, but it's still a sizable creature that you might be able to play early on. Big question, is there a standard deck out there that tries to play this thing on like turn three or turn four? I don't know, maybe. It does feel like that could be kind of awesome if you could pull that off. If the tools are there to maybe make a few creatures, small creatures early on and just play into this, that could be fun. The only problem, though, is if something goes wrong, like this gets blown up, you put a lot of resources into that concept. You kind of need a plan B. And because of that, I don't know if this really makes it to standard, but... Interesting card. I'm definitely looking forward to trying this out in Sealed or Draft. Could be an amazing commander, too, by the way. Urgoros, the Empty One. Two black and four, a legendary creature, Spectre, flying for three. When this deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. If the player can't, you draw a card. Interesting. Hypnotic Spectre on steroids, I guess, basically. And the card is a little slow, though. I mean, a 4-3 flyer is always good. Don't get me wrong. For six, it starts to feel a little expensive. That ability is great. But it's a lot better when you're attacking in with a Spectre on turn two or turn three like you could in the old days with like Dark Ritual, right? So once you play this on turn six, attacking in on turn seven is not as impressive, unfortunately. However, maybe you end up getting some card draw on this eventually. So it's not the worst card in the world by any means. I don't really think you gets to see standard play necessarily at that casting cost. But I'd try it out. I think this could be great for you in your limited games. Whisper Blood Liturgist. This is a black and three legendary creature, human cleric, 2-2, two, two, pay two, sacrifice two creatures, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, it plays into the whole sacrifice for benefit effect that black has here, and also goes into the graveyard recursion, which has been teased a little bit in some of these cards. Is there a deck in standard trying to grab something out of the graveyard with this? Feels like it requires a lot of setup, maybe a little too much. All right, let's look at a few multicolored cards. We have Garna, the Blood Flame, for Rakdos. Red, black, and two, legendary creature, human warrior, three, three, of flash. When this enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. Other creatures you control have haste. 
So it gives your stuff haste, which is nice. This has flash on its own. That's kind of cool. And beyond that, if you sacrificed a bunch of things, then here's an opportunity to maybe bring those things back and then sacrifice them again. Could be interesting. Slimefoot the Stowaway. As we move into a Golgari card here, this is green and black and one legendary creature fungus 2-3. Whenever a sapperling you control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Pay for, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. So a nice mana sink to get some creature tokens he can sacrifice and do different things with, and there's a benefit just when they die on this card, so that's kind of cool. This again feels like a sweet build around me card for draft. You'll be able to find some things to do with it, of course, in sealed too. It might not be as strong there, but definitely in draft this could be amazing for you. And again, I want to really play this in Commander. The casting cost is low enough to at least be considered in standard, but again, there has to be a lot of strong support for this type of mechanic for it to really get there. Dargaz Reincarnated. Legendary Creature Dragon 7-7, Flying, Trample, Haste. If this would die, instead exile it with three egg counters on it at the beginning of your upkeep. If this is exiled with an egg counter on it, remove an egg counter from it, and then if it has no egg counters on it, return it to the battlefield. It has haste, that's good, but this is an expensive creature. Again, maybe you can pull this off in limited some of the time, maybe you can't. Don't really see this doing much, unfortunately, in the world of standard. But, commander, I want to try this out. This could be a really fun commander. It does have haste, so it does get in there and rumble right away. I do like that a lot about this card. All right, we made it through part three. Three more to go, so <laughs> the train's going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying to push these videos out. Not sure what my timeline is going to be on these things. I'm going to try to get them out throughout the weekend at the latest because, of course, Monday we're going to get actual previews on Monday and Tuesday. I'm still going to put the market watch out on Saturday regardless, so I'm going to get there. Three more to go. I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.